and hello everyone welcome to another mim tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at strings in mim so let's get started now let's declare a few variables var first which is equal to hello and var second which is equal to world now a recap from the previous video is a string is anything in double quotes, any piece of text in double quotes. This can even be numbers if you wanted to, but if it's in double quotes, it's a string. Now let's go through a few cool things we can do with strings. Like let's say we want to add these two strings together. Then we can go full is equal to first and name. This will append two strings to each other. So if we were to go echo full, and uh, my bad, it's not first and name, it's first and second. Anyhow, if we were to run this, we'll get hello world. So you can use this and symbol here to add together. In the previous video, we did it here in echo by just using commas because echo is a function. So we can do this and I'll show you later on why. But for right now, we do need to focus on functions. Now we can also get the first letter inside of a string by using indexing. So here we'll start at index zero, which would be hello. Let's actually just use first so we can have a, an idea of how it looks. So here we go, hello. At index zero, we will get H. That's the first index. Indexing always starts at zero in them, not one. In some languages such as Lua, you will start at one but in them, it's always zero. If you run this, you get H right there. If we were to say one, we will get E because hello. And if we were to say second here instead of first, we'll get O because O is at index one, while W is at index zero. So there we go, O. And of course, if we were to say full, we'll get E because full is hello world. So we'll just get E. You can get a specific word from it as well by using indexes to cut out a piece of a string. For example, three dot dot six. Now if we were to run this, we'll get L O space W because zero, one, two, three. So we start here at this L. And then we say we want to go up until six. So three, four, five, and then six. So we basically got this whole part. This is not one word, but we could make it one word. So if we were to just say, hello world, if we were to go like that, because that's anyways what is inside of full. But if we were to go, it just got this. So from index three to index six. You could also do something such as full.low, and this will return the lowest index in a string. In this case, it will be h. So it's basically index zero. That's what we just said here. You also can do full.high, and this will return the highest, aka the last index in a string. So d, because d is the last item in a string. Now we have this method where if we go full and then we do this, then we have a new variable. But what if we wanted to change this variable? Well, then we could just have gone first dot add second. So now first will be hello world because we added the second variable to it. So this is the same as what we did with full but this time it just modified the existing variable and added this piece of text to it. We could even go here and say Mike instead. So now first will be hello Mike right there. So this is if you want to add to an existing piece of text. Take note, if this was let, it will not be allowed because let is constant. Cool. Let's say we want to get the length of this string. Well, there you can just say dot len. This will get the length. If you run it, we'll get six. You can also add brackets here to specify that this is a function. And nim has very interesting function 
feature, so you can also do this. It's the same as with Echo. And you can also do this. And we'll later on get to why this is actually valid NIM code. But for now, you can just note you can do all of this. It's up to you which you prefer. I generally prefer to do this. You can also resize a string. So let's actually have two echoes here, one that has the actual string and one that has the length of the string. We can say first dot set length. And we could set it to let's say free. If we were to run this, we'll get H E L hell and free because we set the length of the string to only three characters, meaning only the first three characters can actually be in the string. Let's take a look at escape characters. Now escape characters is basically characters that can escape from a string. For example, let's say we have first line, second line. Now we have this piece of string, but if we were to run this, we get first line and second line on one line. A way we can negate this is by going like this in first line, echo, second line. But there's sometimes cases where this cannot be done, where you can't just go to the next line and say second line. And you'll see what those cases are the more you code. So in cases like that, we can use backslash in, which is an escape character, meaning new line. So if we do this, we'll get first and on second line, second. You also have things such as backslash T, which means tab. So it will add a tab between first and top and line. If we can add another tab there if we want. Now it will be double tabbed. And you could also have things such as backslash backslash, which will add a backslash because you can't just add a backslash like that. This is for escaping. But if you add backslash backslash, then it will be able to add a backslash in your text. So second backslash line. Or let's even say you want to go echo Siri. And Siri said, I am cool. Now this is an issue because these will escape each other. This string ends here. Then we have a piece of text and then there's a new string. As you can see, this will cause an issue because identifier expected but found that. So you have to escape these quotation marks by going backslash. Now it won't have any issues. Now you have double quotes inside of your double quotes. You can also do it with single quotes if you want. And there are tons of other types of special characters you can use. I would actually just recommend you maybe go read up on it on your own time. Or once you need it, you can just go, oh, I might need to use a special character for this. Now, let's say you need to see these special characters. Well, then you can use R. And this will escape all of your escape characters. So now if we were to run this, you'll see backslash T backslash T backslash in. This is a raw string. But what if you had this? Because now your backslash just doesn't work anymore. Well, in this case, what you can do is you can just double the amount of them. So you go like that. And this will actually escape them. Because in this case, you need to escape them, but you can't. So now it will work. But if you were to use backslashes, since they are being escaped by R, you'll get this, an error. But if you use multiple quotation marks here, so you're basically doubling them, then it will work. Just something you might want to take note of if you write code in them. Now, them also has much more features we can take a look at. For example, let's import something from them. Import str format. And this will allow us to do a lot more in them. So let's say we have a few variables. Now this will allow us to basically format our strings much easier because before we had to go echo, my name is, and then we have to go out of our way and do this and then say name. And I am, and now again, age, years, old, and like 
to eat and again pizza now this is just an example but it's already somewhat cumbersome and this isn't pizza this is food my bad i'm just really in the mood for pizza okay so here we go so now we have my name is comma name and i'm comma age years old and like to eat comma food this works so if you were to run this it works however it's not really that nice primarily because what you know you just have to do all of these extra work just to put variables inside of your string and if you were to use a normal string you'd have to go like this and you have to append them such as this but there's a better way with string format we can use ampersand and now we don't need this we can just say name in brackets same here we don't need all of this we just say age and again here we don't need all of this we just say food and now if we run it we'll get the same output but it will be much nicer and easier to read and all we had to do was add an ampersand here take note this ampersand does come from string format so you need to import this to use it you also have fmt which is actually what num recommends you use because it looks neater and this will work exactly the same however it has a little quirk if you try and use an escape character it will see it as a raw string and not an escape character but if you were to use ampersand then that escape character will be an actual escape character personally i like to use the ampersand more than fmt personal preference but you can choose what you want to use i just prefer ampersand thank you for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you all again in the next nim tutorial